The life of a wrestler is the life of travel, the open road, 100 miles to go between your last match and your next with only an energy drink and a fear full of giant sweaty punch people for company. Performers on both the independent circuit and in WWE know all too well how much a wrestler is required to travel between his fights, and sometimes that traveling happens in the actual matches themselves. Some wrestlers have been pinned in very weird places, and honorable mentions go to the boiler room brawls, the hog pen matches, and the empty arena matches, but these are even weirder. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 wrestling matches that ended in unbelievable locations. Number 10, in a bar. The big boss man Al Snow feud of 99 led to a great many cherished moments, the boss man killing Al's dog and feeding it to him, the kennel of hell match, which was a cage match inside a hell in the cell match with a delectable garnish of bored dog thrown in there. Well, before either of those things, the two men fought at SummerSlam in a match that, unlike Dead Pepper, would go walkies. The two men fighting for the hardcore championship never even started in the ring, brawling straight to the back, followed by the roving road dog with a microphone and his bum bag. They took to the streets outside the venue trying to pin each other on the pavement, then into a bar, into a bar toilet. Boss man got a urinal cake to the face. Al Snow moonsaulted off the bar, threw the boss man on a table. The boss man took pool balls to his junk before Al Snow pinned him on a pool table and ran off to fight with Stevie Richards and the Blue Meanie for no reason. It's always nice when Al Snow's traveling circus comes to town. Number nine, in Newark Airport. That last match was contested for the WWF Hardcore Championship. And if you've never heard of the hardcore title, bless you, don't you have some homework to do. The title was fun, was defended 24-7 anytime, anywhere, as long as you had a referee, and provided countless opportunities for memorable moments of the likes of Al Snow, Steve Blackman, and more than anyone else, Crash Holly. Little Elroy Jetson lookalike Crash held the belt on and off for about six months and was beset on all sides by the tyrannies of evil men. In March 2000, on an episode of Raw, Holly was attacked in Newark Airport by the Mean Street Posse, the sweater vest wearing cretin BFFs of Shane McMahon. Crash got pinned by Pete Gass, who held the title for about 30 seconds before Crash clobbered him with his patented scales, pinned him, and cheesed it through baggage claim. Number eight, inside a shark cage. Okay, well, I'm lying here. This match technically didn't end in a shark cage. In fact, the criteria for winning this match was escaping the cage, but still, God, this is weird. A shark cage match is basically what happens when a normal cage match drinks in the wash. Two men in a tiny metal prison about the size of a phone box plopped in the ring, and they have to batter each other until one can escape. Bulldog Don Kent and Chief J Strongbow fought in this match, and by fought, I mean about as much as you can fight when you're pressed bollock to bollock with another dude and have no room to at least swing a punch. Number seven, in a hotel room. The wonderful adventures of Crash Holly continue once again in March 2000 and once again featuring the Mean Street Posse being sweater vest dick bags. This time they tried to ambush Crash in his hotel room. Is Crash wearing a bathrobe? You better f damn right believe he is. The posse charged Crash, and what happened next was at least 12 slumber parties worth of rough housing. Vases got smashed, room service trolleys were used as weapons, and referee Tim White jumped on the bed. Now, Tim, beds are for grown-ups. Once again, as was his gimmick, Crash somehow, some way, managed to hightail it, keeping the bell around his adorable waist. Number six, in a stables. Regular watchers of these videos might have come to the quite reasonable conclusion that I think Brock Lesnar is the hardest man in the world. And he is very hard. Very hard indeed. He's harder than a f***ing gunshot. So imagine what it means when I say that Terry Funk is harder than Brock Lesnar. Terry Funk is a f***ing lunatic. He's middle-aged and crazy, or, well, he's old and crazy now, I guess, who has put his body through every conceivable punishment there is. And once, on an episode of WCW Thunder in May 2000, Funk got kicked in the f***ing arm by a f***ing horse. Funk was wrestling Chris Candido in a hardcore match which left the arena and travelled to a stables. Of course it did. The fight then spilled into one of those horse enclosures when Funk spooked the filly by dropping Candido with a pile driver. The horse then kicked out, smacking Funk on the arm. His response was, F*** you horse, I'll kick your ass. What a guy. Number five, on the back of a truck. The King of the Road match is something we've covered before, but that's only because it's goddamn awful stupid. Uncensored 1995 in a match between Dustin Rhodes and Blacktop Bully, but not just any match, a match in a cage full of hay. And not just any cage full of hay, a cage full of hay on the back of a moving lorry. The winner was the first man to fight his way to the front of the lorry and blow the horn. It's sh don't you ever get me wrong, but in terms of actual traveling during a wrestling match, this fight probably racked up the most miles. Number four, in a strip club. As we all know from his many sermons during his time with WWE, CM Punk is straight edge, which means no booze, no drugs. Turns out strip clubs, however, they're very much kosher. During his days with Full Impact Pro, the Florida-based promotion that was once super best friends with Ring of Honor, Punk fought Homicide in a Falls Count Anywhere match for the FIP title, and it really did mean anywhere. The two fought out of the building into a strip club called Little Tootsies, a deeply unsettling name for a strip club. They battled around the pole, they used a pole to hit flying drop kicks. At one point, Punk screams at a dancer, You are a whore! Ha <laughs> ha! 
That's a horrible thing to say. Number three, in a river. There was only one St. Valentine's Day massacre pay-per-view, possibly because people found it disrespectful to name an event after an actual massacre that actually happened. Anyway, this show saw a great many treats. Gold Dust versus Blue Dust, the debut of the man who would become Big Show, and this little weird thing between Al Snow and Bob Holly. It's Al Snow and the Hardcore Championship again. So that can only mean one thing. It's time to visit the neighborhood. The two men fight out of the arena, into the car park, and then onto the bank of the Mississippi River. Both men ended up in the drink, of course, before Holly ended the match by wrapping Snow in a load of fencing. Considering both men probably swallowed loads of the Mississippi River, I really pity their toilets. Number two, in a playpen. Hi Crash, welcome back. So look, this also happened in March 2000 and basically WWF were kicking the shit out of Crash at every available opportunity to build to a giant hardcore championship scramble match featuring most of the mid-carders in the world trying to kick his ass. Crash was booked to win that match but a botched timing of the last pin gave the win to Hardcore Holly just as the timer ran out but that's another story for another time. This weird Smackdown segment featured the headbangers Martian Thrasher ambushing Crash while he was just trying to enjoy Fun Time USA, an indoor amusement center in New York. It ended up in a ball pit, of course it did, with Crash actually managing to nail a hurricane run in a playpen for once again cheesing it with his title. And number one, in the Gulf of Mexico. Once more into the waters in this really odd match from WWE's reboot of ECW, on a 2008 episode emanating from Corpus Christi in Texas, the champion Chavo Guerrero and CM Punk fought in a Gulf of Mexico match, meaning the winner was the first man to hurl his opponent into the titular river. I don't believe CM Punk screamed at anyone that they were a whore in this match, though it's been a while since I watched it. The two men fought out of the arena and Punk managed to GTS his foe straight into the gulf and the title wasn't even on the line. What? Why would you... It's a very weird thing to have happened. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.